yourself, it goes before a fall. The devil fell and we fall. If we, if we exalt ourselves and become prideful in our walk. List various negative outcomes of this sin. So that's negative outcomes. Right. So list the blessings that the humble receive. Okay. You're lifted up by the Lord to get salvation and wisdom and honor, greatness in the kingdom of heaven and exaltation and grace. And I'm here to tell you not going nowhere without the grace of God. Not only do you need to receive grace, but you need to give grace to others. It's real. Yeah. Ain't no need to play. You know that's 
charged yeah. for that. You got to get it in your heart. Yeah. When you took him on as your personal oh Savior, God. you rightly belong to him. Yeah. And so therefore the word says that he will order your steps. Yeah. Yeah. Now when he begins to order your steps, quit crying because it didn't go the way you thought it would. Yeah. Just say, Lord, I thank you for the grace yeah. that you give yeah. to my yeah. life that I'm able to weather in the storm. I'm, I'm able to walk through the valley. I, I'm able to climb the mountain. I, I'm able to do whatever you say I need to do because of your amazing grace. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God. Praise God. If you want the power of God and the glory of God, you have to walk in the right attitude Amen. and the right way. Yes, we do. What will, what will God do? What will God do? Mm -hmm. He didn't say what will we do, he said what will God do? Right, right, that's right. For those who humble themselves, yes. mm -hmm. not them that had to be knocked down, but those that just right. submit. <laughs> that's true right there. You gotta submit, bow your neck. Right. God, I bow my neck to your will. Whatever your will is, I thank you, Father, because your word declares that all things work together for oh, good. Yes. Yes. See, if you got to believe the book or, believe the book. or not believe the book. Amen. And, and if you believe one page, you got to believe every page. Right. <laughs> so you got to say, okay, Lord, I thank you that you're working it out for my, for my good. And everything don't feel good and everything don't look good, right. but it works good. So if you can keep that in your thought pattern and in your life and in your heart, instead of murmuring and complaining, you'll be able to say, thank you, God, you work all things for my good. And that's what you have to live. Amen. Yes, it is. A third obstacle to God in transformation is to deny the need for change in one's life. If we say that we have no sin, what do we do to ourselves? We do. Amen. You know, y'all met people you felt like they were deceived. Amen. Have you not? Amen. Sure you have. Amen. You ain't careful. You meet one almost frequently. Amen. But you know, often we have to realize that the Word of God is a mirror. Amen. Amen. And, and when we look in that word, we have to see us. Absolutely. You know, when you come to church, you don't bring a pitchfork to throw it to somebody else. You should bring a rake to bring it to yourself. And say, God, whatever area in my life that's not right, whatever area I'm not right, deal with it. Highlight it for me so I can get it right. Because I don't want to be messed up or mixed up. Come on. I don't want to miss out on what your great plans are. Yeah. 
There's nothing I love more about him than the way he understands who, who we are. Yeah. And how we function and think. As a consequence, what key components of spiritual life is not is not in us. Well, before you come to know Jesus, you really don't know truth. Amen. Amen. The Bible teaches you that Jesus is the truth. I have already the truth and the life, right? So when you come to know Jesus, is when truth begins to work in your life. Not until then. Because you meet real truth when you meet him. And when you ask him to come in your life, truth moves in with him. And then you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So you're not free of your own accord. It's only when you meet truth that you get free. It's when you have an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, and you meet truth. Spirit, 
They begin to prophesy stuff. You see how quick them folk get nervous? They're ready to check out. That's real. I see that. Ain't you seen that? I had a heartbeat out beating out of the chest. They got to go to the bathroom in a hurry. They think they're going to be the next one they're going to call. Amen. That's real. Y'all know y'all been guilty too. Don't play. You know it's so good. Especially you get one that's really reading and reading and tight. Of God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. The glory of God. 
or his presence expresses the spiritual condition of an individual. In study nine, we discussed the lukewarm spiritual state of the Christians of the church of Laodicea who were reprimanded by the risen Christ in the book of Revelations. What did the Laodiceans say about themselves that showed they didn't sense a need for spiritual transformation? Rich and increased in goods, and they had no need of anything or nothing. And I find that often when I'm preaching all over the world. Yes. Lots of folks sitting in church. That's true. With no need of anything. Yes. Come on. Oh, my. With no need of a touch from the master. With no need Amen. of a fresh moving of his spirit. No need. No wonder they say that this end time church currently now is like, like the Laodiceans. Because America has been blessed, and therefore now it seems like she don't need God, or she don't want God, or she don't talk about God. Or let's remove God from the school, and let's remove God from the workplace, and let's remove God from the jail, and let's remove God from wherever. But I'm here to tell you, God will never be removed because He is God. People may not serve Him, they may not do what y'all need, but there is a people that refuse to give up, and there's some people going to serve Him to the day. Amen. 
A fourth obstacle to godly transformation is having a spirit of religion and legalism. Ooh. Instead of living in their newfound freedom in Christ, who were the Colossians subjecting themselves to? I think most of my training in Pentecostal churches was regulations. Amen. Yes, it's true. That's real. Yes, yeah. It's true. I was raised in Floyd Pond Homeless Church. I can tell you right now, Fred Tapper. Hey, Fred you tell you something. <laughs> yeah. You felt like you were going to hell even if you weren't. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, and you better believe one thing. You, you abide by what he said or else. No, the consequence. There was a lot of them, too. Amen. I'm glad for the day that the Lord taught me the truth of liberty in Him. Amen. It was not a set of man-made rules, but it's a set of the Word of God. Amen. And that brought freedom to my life. Yes. That I no longer had to be, be a pleaser of men, but I needed to be a pleaser of God. And when I learned to be a pleaser of God, then I got freedom in my heart and joy in my heart. And it didn't matter what anybody else had to say at that point. I already knew who I was. I was persuaded. A fourth obstacle to godly transformation is having a spirit, I'm going to say it again, of religion and legalism. Now, all across the world, there is a spirit of religion. And there is legalism in every form, somewhere, everywhere you go. I do believe that men of old, they walked in the light that they had and they understood. But I do not believe they had all the answers, nor all the light. And when you move from glory to glory, that greater light swallows up. It don't annihilate it. It swallows it up. It means it wraps it up. And the Lord moves you further along this journey. So you don't despise where you came from. You thank God for your beginning. But you don't get satisfied at a beginning and say, Lord, I'm going to stop right here. You say to the Lord, I want to go further than I've ever been. So, Lord, I, I, I know they maybe didn't go that way, but I want to. Joshua had to make a decision when he came to the Jordan. Because he had never been a leader before. He didn't know what he was up for, and he really didn't ask for the assignment. And then, first of all, he had to circumcise all of them a second time. And then, then they already know that the Jordan is out of her banks. It's already running over. And now he's got to cross all
So I understand that we got some traditions because we, we do. We, we've been raised with traditions. But when they hinder the move of God, then we need to let them go. What did the, these regulations have an appearance of? Complete the following. These things indeed have an appearance of wisdom. What do, what do y'all think false humility is? Because the enemy has spent most of your life trying to convince you that you cannot do 